Hey everybody. Um, Criterion Collection, movie number four. It is currently Thanksgiving. It is late. I am tired. Uh, you may notice I've got a small furry object. It's because I watched this movie with a friend. This is Zoe. Zoe doesn't know how to look at a camera. But Zoe was there. Penny was there too. Penny's over on the floor. You want to come here, Penny? Do you want to say hi to the people at home? Come here. Penny helped too. So we watched Ummercord, which I'm sure I am not pronouncing correctly. Hold on. Let me just... Oh, oh there you go. All right. Now we can talk. We watched Armor Court, which is the first Fellini film to be on the list. Um, it is, it's actually a little interesting to me because while the movie is, came out in 1973, it is set in Italy in the late 30s, which makes it the third movie out of four that is set in the late 30s. Um, the other two were made in the 30s and set contemporarily, whereas this one was a period piece. Um, this one's a little bit of a weird one. Do you girls think they're perfectly comfortable? Uh, I haven't seen a lot of Fellini before, but I read an interview that he did. Um, and one of the things that he strove to do was to use film in a different way. Uh, he didn't want to use film to tell a story. He wanted to use film to tell a poem. Amarcord, which I'm sure I'm not pronouncing correctly because I screw up foreign words constantly, is essentially life in a small town in Italy. There is no strong plot. It's mostly vignettes uh, with a couple of various characters. Uh these characters' fantasies and realities kind of interweave throughout the course of the film. There are two characters who speak directly to the camera, which is interesting because one of them keeps getting interrupted by townspeople interfering with him talking to us, which is kind of an interesting touch. Um, it's hard to have a lot to say about this one because there's not a strong story. Things happen, and things happen to certain people. Um, sexuality and desire kind of weaves its way through the story as well, uh, because there's a group of teenage boys that the story comes around to, uh, that the movie comes around to over and over again. So obviously they have objects of desire throughout the town. Um, there, There is one scene where they are really examining women sitting on bicycles. Oh, sorry, I, I'm, I'm tired. Uh, this is the first color movie that we've seen in the collection. I do want to say, I don't recommend this one as heartily. I enjoyed it. I thought it was good, but the lack of a strong narrative definitely makes it the most artsy of the movies that we've seen so far. Now, if an artsy film is your thing, hey, you can't go wrong with Fellini. Go for it. But uh, due to the lack of a strong narrative, if you're just an average movie consumer, this one may not be a big hit for you. What did you girls think? Yeah? Right, we'll get Penny's face in there, too. Yeah, they don't, they don't have strong opinions about this one. Uh, they don't speak Italian. So it didn't super work for them. Um, it, it's kind of a short review here, guys, on this Thanksgiving Day. So I, I clearly just need to go to bed. What is next? Well, next is uh, we're going back to a French film. The 400 Blows. I, as usual, know nothing about that. Actually, the next two movies on the Criterion Collection are French, so... Yeah, how do you girls feel about a French film? Any interest? Yes? No? Maybe so? Okay, thank you. 
um, it's a well shot film. It's it's very well made. It was a good time. I I do prefer a narrative focus. I mean, I love stories. I play video games for stories. I read comic books for stories. I read books for stories. TV, movies. I consume stories wherever they are. Uh, so this one was a break from that for me. But there are other ones on here where story is not the pressing concern. And it is fun to see somebody do uh, try to do something different with the medium. Uh, and instead of focusing on uh, a story, focusing on motifs. One of the running motifs in this is everybody in this little Italian town it, it is silly and frivolous. And I think there's a political undertone to it because obviously this is set during a time when fascism is not just on the rise, but there. It is the leading cause. But everybody is silly and frivolous and nothing is super serious there's even a scene where fascists have basically yanked a guy out of his house in the middle of the night and are interviewing him to see if he did a thing that they didn't like and they force him to drink castor oil and then send him home so the whole thing is kind of silly and frivolous there's a lot of comedic moments in it uh, the, the sexuality stuff is generally done with a wink and a nod. Um, it is a light-hearted time. So, I, I can't give it as full-throated a recommendation because it's really going to depend on whether or not you can sit through two hours without a strong story. That's your call. Uh, as for me, I'm going to go to bed. And then at some point soon, I'll watch the 400 Blows. Although, before that, I do have a WTF cinema I need to do. That's definitely going to be next. Anyway, uh, from the fam here, happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you next time.